thanks for the detailed uh, personalized uh, introduction uh, thank you sir the light of our life that is the topic for today rather than calling this as a speech i like to face it like uh, a yeah, discussion session before uh, going to the contents of the topic uh, let us try to discuss about the topic itself first here i would like to start with a story long ago there was a guru to explain a principle to two of his uh, disciples he just uh, gave them a task he gave uh, rupees Hundred to each one of them, and uh, told them, "You have to buy something with this money, and fill your room with that thing, whatever you are buying. I'll give you two days time, and I will see you after two days." This is what uh, the guru told about the task. So now both the disciples went uh, back and uh, decided to. do something and they have done that so the day has come guru is visiting uh, the first uh, disciple so the disciple took the guru to his room and show that the room is full of some old uh, gunny bags so the guru thought for some time and uh, he saw the disciple and he asked him what is this and I explain uh, how you arrived to this idea and what you did exactly then he said that uh, with 100 rupees uh, this is the thing i can buy which can fill the entire room then uh, okay guru was uh, seeing the other disciple and decided okay let us continue and uh, see his room also then we will discuss about uh, the task further then they reached uh, to other another uh, disciples room and he just opened the door and inside the room they saw a lamp a small lamp which is glowing in a corner of the room so again uh, the guru asked uh, that disciple what exactly happened in your mind and how you came to this idea and what you decided then he said that uh, i didn't even uh, spend uh, more than 10 rupees from the money what you gave uh, when i thought that i thought this is the only thing which uh, by which i can fill the entire room so with that idea i bought a small lamp and i lit in a corner so the complete room is filled with the brightness of the lamp this is what uh, the disciple told then the guru continued the discussion uh, with both of them and he explained the principle what he intended to explain okay that is the story coming back uh, to our topic here so the story was given for explaining some principle we can leave it there and uh, let us take one question from that uh, story the light that is what the disciple uh, decided right uh, when he bought the lamp the brightness or light coming out of that lamp is filling the entire room so which is the light of our life can we think for a while and try to check which can be the one thing bring the light in our life so that we can get enlightened to a higher level step by step yeah as we all know up to the purpose of life achievement so to reach to that st- stage what can be the one thing like this lamp can bring the brightness or light in our life
Okay, I hope you are all spending time on thinking. Yeah, started getting some answers. So Babu is telling about knowledge, and we got another interesting answer also. Spouse. From Professor Muthu. Yeah, we got another answer also. Guru or master. Okay, for today's uh, discussion, let us take uh, Mr. Babu's answer. The knowledge. We might have heard uh, many quotes, right? Knowledge is power, and uh, knowledge. Share is multiply, and uh, in some places we used to say lack of knowledge. That is the problem. So that is indirectly meaning that the knowledge only can add more and more strength. So for today's discussion, we are taking knowledge as the light of our life. Even some places they used to say that uh, partial knowledge is also dangerous. We might have heard about uh, the story, right? Uh, four different uh, blind persons uh, touching and realizing the elephant as different in different uh, perception. So the partial knowledge may lead to that level. So that is also danger in some places. But uh, you know, overall, exactly what. we mean by knowledge when we talk about uh, the literary meaning knowledge is a familiarity or awareness or understanding of someone or something such as facts skills or objects so this is what the wikipedia meaning for knowledge but uh, for today's uh, today's discussion context we will keep that even though this is uh, phrased as knowledge we will keep this term in an understanding up to knowledge wisdom consciousness of course we all know that all three are different and all have got uh, different uh, definitions our uh, guru also gave very good explanations on this uh, terminology and what is the difference within the definitions but for today's uh, discussion context we will keep all three of them as a single word which is termed as knowledge so the types of knowledge when we are uh, talking about again from the literary meaning we are going to the uh, understanding what is there so far generally in the society when we talk about uh, the types of knowledge there are uh, different philosophies talking about the knowledge in different uh, manner so there are some examples we will see that before uh, continuing further on this uh, topic three core types of knowledge there is one philosophy talking about uh, three types of knowledge which are listed as explicit knowledge implicit knowledge and tacit knowledge they are like yeah documented information which can be communicated to others and the second one is like applied information and we are applying the learned information that is called as second type of knowledge and the third one is like understood information how we perceive and how we proceed for implementing so there is another philosophy categorizing the knowledge in a different manner that is also listed as three categories so one is talking about general knowledge domain specific knowledge and site specific knowledge it looks like uh, some corporate uh, language right so we are uh, acquiring some general knowledge which will be required for any basic person and then domain specific knowledge depends on the 
specific uh, skill what is required for playing that exact role by that person and site specific knowledge depends on the practical field whatever uh, they are working what is the practical knowledge required to demonstrate the ability to perform that role so continuing further there is uh, one more philosophy talking about uh, four types of knowledge which are listed as factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge and metacognitive knowledge i think uh, except the fourth one all three are giving the direct meaning which we can easily understand understand right so the metacognitive uh, knowledge is talking about the cognitive skills how we utilize the cognitive abilities to grasp and implement the knowledge what are gained in other types so that's what talk in this type of uh, knowledge in this type of categorization yeah again another philosophy uh, categorizing another four types declarative knowledge procedural knowledge contextual knowledge and somatic knowledge again uh, going to the meaning of this uh, categories uh, when we talk about declarative it's talking about uh, the stored information what is like a static state like some facts or uh, the historical information then it is stored in the brain we are not going to process or we are not going to change anything it will be just stored as a static information that type is called as declarative knowledge and the procedural knowledge of course yeah when we are uh, talking about the yeah, procedural steps how step by step we have to move ahead so that is that kind of knowledge is called as procedural knowledge and when we talk about uh, contextual knowledge the knowledge which is required for uh, situational decision making because we know that uh, the things can keep on changing around us right so based on the situation we have to make a lot of decisions in our day to day life so the knowledge which is required for situational decision making that is called as contextual knowledge and the last one in the list in this list is uh, somatic knowledge this is like a experiential knowledge so by using the knowledge what we gained by uh, going through the books or hearing from others how we are putting into our actions by our own senses and perceptions we experienced it and how we implement that how we are utilizing it for the implementation stage that is called as somatic uh, type of knowledge again there is a big list which is given by the neurologists when they did the research on our brain there are 13 types of knowledge based on the area it is stored and based on the processing uh, nature of our brain they categorize this so just again it's for information only we are not going to discuss in detail about this so some are appearing like a general term which we can easily see in other type of uh, categories also and some are looking like a uh, medical terms right so the 13 types of knowledge are listed by the neurologist okay again we will see uh, how the religion see about the knowledge now before going that there is one more uh, corporate uh, level of categorization we are seeing now the 12 types of knowledge this is again like uh, learning from experience and the reasoning knowledge dispersed knowledge expert knowledge subconscious expert knowledge conscious expert knowledge research knowledge mastering the learning knowledge so that itself is one of the category yeah mastering learning how to master our learning capability and how to so in anything we are uh, talking about how to do that how to say that or whatever so how to knowledge is one of the category and situation specific knowledge again we have seen in some of the earlier categories also and visible visible blind spot knowledge 
and invisible blind spot knowledge so these are the actual types of knowledge which we are seeing in another category also yeah now the great uh, philosopher aristotle he also talked a lot of uh, information about the knowledge and he gave lot of philosophical explanation on knowledge which is just summarized in this way like a small flow chart so he is telling that knowledge has got the three stages which are termed as technique praxis and phronosis so again it starts like a cycle so the first one is the knowledge of change and variability and the second one is like a principle to action to engage uncertainty so when we get some information that is processed and we are designing some actions based on that so that is the second category so that will lead into a practical reasoning regarding impact of action, action on the course of change so that is the third one so it keeps working like a cycle so this is what uh, aristotle has explained about the knowledge yeah as i was telling again uh, earlier some time ago we have to we are going to discuss now how the religions uh, see about the knowledge so all the religions mostly all the religions talked about knowledge how important they are and how it helps the human being to move the stages of our life to attain the perfection stage in our life so for example in hinduism uh, the knowledge is given very importance uh, through uh, the sanatan dharma for example yeah we can see in sanatan dharma is telling that sharing knowledge is the highest level of dana which is charity which any person can do so the uh, knowledge sharing is considered is that much important through this religion that is a message given to the society and it also mentions about uh, two types of knowledge one is uh, paroksha jnana and other one is a uh, pratyaksha jnana yeah one uh, gain through going through the books and talking to the people acquiring the knowledge that is called the first category and the second one is like by our own experience when we do something we will understand this is what uh, the result of that action so that kind of knowledge is called as a second uh, category so in christianity then we see the knowledge is again considered uh, as an important uh, theme and even they talked about this is one of the seven gifts of the holy spirit so this is the special gift which is given to the human being to grasp and utilize it in their life to improve their creativity and then they can reach to the god by utilizing that knowledge and in islam knowledge is one of the 99 names reflecting distinct attributes of god so they are terming the god itself in a different manner by the term knowledge and the prophet muhammad is stating that seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave so the continuous growth in all ages of our life that theme is important as what it is indicating and again in uh, jewish custom they are also giving more important uh, to this theme which is knowledge they are even telling that knowledge is chosen above gold so when there is a choice given person has to give more preference to knowledge than the gold so that much importance is given by the religions on this uh, knowledge i think we had now some enough understanding our confusion on the term knowledge right so whenever we have uh, come to this stage like a uh, confused state we used to go back to our vedatriyam principles since we are all the practitioner of vedatriyam so let us see now what maharishi has given us on this theme 
knowledge. So as we know, uh, the Mahans and Jnanis will be evolving in this society based on the need of the society. When people need some information, so some Mahan will evolve in that society and give the required information to the people through his philosophical explanations. This is what we have seen uh, across the length of the human being's life. Right? So that is what we have seen so far also. A lot of uh, explanation concepts have been developed on this theme knowledge based on the time of that uh, philosopher or uh, that type of society which was requiring that information in that moment of time. So similarly, in our uh, lifetime, we got our Guru Vedatri Magrishi given a full-fledged uh, process of practice for any human being to move progress in their life. So particularly on this uh, theme, knowledge, when we see our uh, Maharishi's explanations. See, I was just uh, getting surprised to see this. There is uh, one daily noble thought, which is a book written by our Maharishi. So I just uh, glanced through the book and uh, there were more than 25 topics are talking about this knowledge. Yeah, almost all of the explanations will be based on this, that's different, but directly to give the meaning of that term or explaining the types of knowledge or how it can be implemented or utilized in our life, those explanations are directly touched uh, in around uh, more than around 25 topics. That is what uh, observed in that book. And even when we start learning the Vedatriyam practice, our Maharishi used to start the explanation about the knowledge, even when we are talking about the first step, like understanding our life's objective. So when we talk about that, we might have heard that, right? The purpose of man's birth on earth is to develop knowledge to its fullest. Because as we all know, the sixth sense is the special skill which human beings having it. So that has to be developed further and further and to reach up to the perfection, which is like a realization of self. And we will be reaching to that step if we understand the objective properly and then only we will be able to move progress. So that is what uh, he is starting with the explanation to us. And again, uh, Maharishi has classified uh, the knowledge level or stages. When we talk about, there are three levels of knowledge, which is explained to us in the philosophy of life topic. Right? So these are the three stages or three levels, which we all will be going through or progressing through in our lifetime when the knowledge fact is considered. So those are called as faith, understanding and perfection. So when we are in the young age, we used to see now comparatively, we can visualize when we see the children. So they are talking their, they are starting their uh, level on the knowledge theme in the faith uh, level. So they used to believe what they were told and what they are seeing. From there, they will acquire the knowledge. So that is in the faith stage. So the understanding will come after a certain age. They will start analyzing and understand and perceive the things and develop their own belief system based on the faith, what they had in the earlier step. So that is uh, coming in the understanding stage. And the third one, perfection. So once uh, the understanding is strongly built in their own uh, self and when they are having a clear understanding and through the proper connectivity with the absolute consciousness they will be able to reach to the perfection stage and yeah as we talked some time back uh, the sixth sense has to be developed so when we talk about sixth sense uh, Maharishi is giving a clear definition to that. The cognitive or analytical ability, that is a special skill 
held in the sixth sense. So that ability is the key which has the power to the knowledge. When we talk about the knowledge is the power, so these all uh, are based on this concept only. And again, uh, Maharishi has touched in another uh, place about uh, cognitive ability and he's talking about acquiring that ability or utilizing that ability. He is categorizing the knowledge level in five different uh, types. <clears throat> Those are listed as instinct, perspicacity, intuition, knowledge, and wisdom. Yeah, as we can see, uh, there is some two different terminology which are uh, used here like knowledge and wisdom. So the first one instinct, uh, we all know that, right? Instinct is like uh, the instant knowledge by any spontaneous things when we do. Like uh, for example, when we are uh, touching a hot surface, we can immediately remove our hands because the mind command system works rapidly to safeguard ourselves. So this kind of uh, knowledge level is called as instinct. So when the cognitive ability is working in that type, that is categorized as instinct type of knowledge. The second one is the perspicacity. This also a little bit uh, advanced uh, level of knowledge level. When we talk about uh, perspicacity, yeah, it is like uh, to understand that term clearly, uh, we have one uh, Tamil uh, proverb. Like we used to say, uh, what exactly it means is about when we talk about sesem, the grain sesem, some people can immediately visualize right from the growing of the sesem up to the end product, which is the sesem oil, gingerly oil, we call it as, right? So they will be able to visualize the complete process or cycle of that sesem. Before we term the word say same, the entire uh, picture will be in their mind. So that kind of knowledge, so that is quoted as an example here. Yeah, that type of uh, personality or knowledge level or processing, cognitive ability processing skill is categorized as perspicacity. And the third one is intuition. Yeah, we hear a lot in our uh, system when we talk about it, right? So when we do meditation and when we lower the frequency, we will be able to uh, realize or recognize this type of cognitive ability within ourselves. So intuition, we used to get some kind of information from the divine when we are in the lower frequency level. So the fourth and fifth levels are knowledge and wisdom. So in this uh, context, in this theme, uh, in this particular area, what uh, knowledge is referring, we can say like uh, gathering the information collected through learning or through books that is categorized as knowledge level. And when we talk about wisdom, this is the knowledge which is gained through our own experience in our day-to-day -day life. When we do things, some results are seen. So we are developing some kind of knowledge. So that is categorized as this wisdom. So these five are the types which Magarishi is categorizing in the cognitive ability topic. <clears throat> okay, here in one of the daily noble thought topic, Magarishi is talking that about the differences in state of knowledge. So within that state of knowledge, what are the differences? So this uh, philosophical quote is giving a very broad explanation, which we need to spend a lot of time to understand if this is not uh, read properly. So let's see what exactly he's talking about. What is the philosophy of the nature which is functioning without any moral function? Who am I researching it? What is the link between it and me? So what is the relationship? So this kind of research will be possible when we do continuous meditation. Then only we will be able to understand or perceive about the nature which is the silent component around us, which we are not, which generally people not uh, spending much time on researching on it. 
So when we lower the frequency, we will be able to understand the natural changes or nature, what exact message it is giving to the human being. So that kind of uh, research state is called as Pranamaya Kosa. So when we talk about uh, five different Kosas, he talked about uh, Pranamaya Kosa, which is further developed to the fifth state of Anandamaya Kosa. So these two stages are mainly important when we talk about progressing in the knowledge theme. So that is what uh, this quote is talking about. And I like to recall about uh, the Maharishi's speech in United Nations of Organization, which uh, he has given. He got an opportunity to strongly communicate his message to the entire world. So this is the main uh, caption which is covered in his uh, speech in UNO. The aim of the World Community Service Center is to spread the spiritual knowledge to the people of all nations. After a long period of research, over 40 years of my life, I found out that only spiritual knowledge will result in peace within self, in the society, and among nations. So. Being the global peace or world peace as an objective of our organization, he strongly communicated the message and the basic requirement to reach to that stage that is clearly explained to the entire world. Yeah, some of us will be surprised about uh, Pagarishi's UNO visit also, right? Because it may be a new information to you all. Yes, Pagarishi, on his uh, age of around 65, he visited and he got an opportunity to deliver a speech in United Nations of Organization. Yeah, that's exactly on 9th January, 1975. So this is the message he gave. So which clearly tells that the spiritual knowledge and uh, the knowledge theme, we have to progress all through the life and especially on the spiritual knowledge path, we have to develop. So how to develop on that? And we talk about improving the spiritual knowledge within us, starting from the self, right? So the strong practice or strong uh, belief we all have as Vedatriyans, the meditation, among all the practices which our Guru gave, the meditation is giving that ability to us. So when we start meditating, we are able to bring down the frequency of our mind functioning. So that helps to process the information properly and make proper decisions, which is resulting in a progressive stage of our knowledge. So this is one of the powerful quote, uh, which is related to our uh, theme today. To, to reach the peak of self-knowledge, the life force is to be observed by the mind. So the meditation, what we are practicing, that is based on this uh, quote in my point of view, because we are all starting the meditation initially at Agna. So what exactly we are doing is we are trying to focus by our mind on our life force. So this is the first step we are all learning in Vedatriyam meditation practice. So I'd like uh, to get your involvement here. Can anyone volunteer to read out what exactly it is on the screen now? Yeah, you can unmute and uh, read out now, Binjan or Anu. Good morning, be blessed by the divine. It is written, आत्म ज्ञान के चोटी पर पहुंचने के लिए मन को जीवन शक्ति का निरीक्षण करना चाहिए. I read it once again. आत्म ज्ञान के चोटी पर पहुंचने के लिए मन को जीवन शक्ति का निरीक्षण करना चाहिए. Yeah, thank you. It is just uh, the translation of exactly what we are seeing in English, the same quote, right? I just wanted to 
repeat this code in multiple languages which is taken by the help of our wave appeals which is one of the being in our organization so he is going to volunteer to read out this in marathi yeah mr janvi can proceed गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन आत्मज्ञा शिखरा पोचने सा जीवन शक्ति लनाक्षित आत्मज्ञा शिखरा पोचने सा जीवन शक्ति लनाक्षित थैंक यू या वंस अगेन द सेम पोर्ट वॉट वी हेव सीन हियर सो टू रीच द पीक ऑफ सेल्फ नॉलेज द लाइफ फोर्स इज टू बी ऑब्जर्व बाय द माइंड दैट इज वॉट रेड in marathi by janvi ma'am so the next one is the same in gujarati can we hear from someone the same quote read in gujarati yeah you may proceed now Take yes a uh, good morning आत्मज्ञान शिखर सुधी पहुंचवा जीवन शक्ति ध्यान में राखी जो आत्मज्ञान शिखर सुधी पहुंचवा जीवन शक्ति ध्यान में राखी जो थैंक यू वी हेव फ्यू मोर लैंग्वेजेस टू गो नॉट श्योर एनिबडी कैन रीड टेलिगु हियर द सेम कोट इज अपियरिंग ऑन टेलिगु Yeah, Mr. Ayana, you can go ahead. Good morning, sir. Atma Jnana Parama Avadhani Charadani ki Manasu Prana Sekdani Gamnustu Undali. Once again, Atma Jnana Parama Avadhani Charadani ki Manasu Prana Sekdani Gamnustu Undali. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. So again, the same quote we read in. telugu so this is in bengali i'm not sure anyone can read this okay again so these are all uh, telling about the same fact or same principle which is taken by our guru maharishi as a basis for learning the meditation to reach the peak of self knowledge the life force is to be observed by the mind so that is what being done in our first stage of agna meditation so which is the stepping stone for every other higher level meditations so from there that stage onwards we are progressing to all higher levels so again uh, this is the same quote is appearing in a different uh, meaning in tamil விழிப்புணர்வு என்பது ஞானத்தை நோக்கிய அதன் பரிணாம வளர்ச்சியில் அறிவின் உயர் கட்டமாகும் ஸோ திஸ் அகெயின் டச்சிங் அபவுட் த அனதர் டர்ம் த அவேர்னஸ் ஸோ இட் இஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி ஜஸ்ட் அப்சர்விங் அ லைஃப் ஃபோர்ஸ் அண்ட் வி ஹாவ் டு மெயின்டெயின் தட் அவேர்னஸ் இன் ஆல் த்ரூ த டே ஆஃப் அவர் ஆக்டிவ் லைஃப் டைம் மீன்ஸ் த அப்சர்வேஷன் வில் பி டன் ஒன்லி டியூரிங் மெடிடேஷன் but we have to maintain the awareness all through the day then only that decision made the lower frequency uh, processing capability will be utilized effectively in our deeds so that is what this theme is meaning okay again now here i want to quote uh, one more uh, important uh, book by our magrishi i'm not sure it is translated in english uh, so far or no the tamil topic for this is anmeha vilak so in this book uh, maharishi is talking about the knowledge like our uh, topic right today the light of our life so how the light of our life the consciousness how the consciousness is helping all the human beings so we all know that we are branch from the absolute consciousness so we all have little partial consciousness which can be termed as knowledge we all have our own knowledge 
and that has to be progressed step by step to attain the full consciousness so in this book uh, he is giving very beautiful explanations how the nature works in this uh, transferring of consciousness or flowing of knowledge to everyone when there is a need so he is giving a practical life experience like uh, water moving from a higher elevation to lower elevation similarly whenever there is a need when a person is requiring some kind of information the people who are having that information will be automatically connected through the universal magnetism to that person and they, he will get the required information so this is the way the information or consciousness is flowing across the world with all human beings so this is what uh, he has explained as a theme i'm just uh, giving the extract of that book so he has given in detailed explanation in this book so by this we will be able to visualize how it is all working when we talk about uh, uh, fraction demands uh, the totality supplies and uh, people having determination and hard work can see the success how that is working this is the way so when we keep our determination strongly to get some kind of information and strive to achieve that automatically when our strength increases there will be a flow of information happening from the total consciousness so that principle can be clearly visualized uh, by all the explanation which is given by our guru in this book so he's just concluding in that uh, book to understand the divine consciousness and to understand the connectivity of genetic center power of magnetism knowledge on five elements philosophy so this three can lead to lead us to the perfection stage that is what he is concluding in that uh, book okay again another uh, poem which is given by our guru and this also giving a very practical uh, information to us on this theme which we are discussing today if you seek to cross the ocean of births and deaths what you should develop is constant awareness so that you may win on two battle fronts the first is not to sow the seed for lineage and then you should erase ego and sin imprints along with attachment to objects ephemeral and so far i think only this ephemeral is a new word poetic word which is not giving clear meaning others are directly understandable by us so ephemeral here he is meaning like uh, the temporary things which is like objects around us the physical objects which has definite short time life so the poem continues the positive method to score these victories in victories is meditation combined with conduct virtuous thus you should expand the frontiers of your mind and get established in knowledge supreme so this poem uh, i feel that it is giving the second uh, stage like how we are progress we when we talk about utilizing our vedatriyam practices in development of our knowledge we just started talking about focusing on our life force that is the first step we said right meditation so this uh, last line i feel it is meaning to the second stage uh, the expansion of our mind when the frequency is reduced so we have to be on the expanded state of mind so that we can perceive things in a broader manner so we will be able to see a bigger picture and understanding the things more and more in a better way so that will help us to reach to the knowledge supreme which is the absolute consciousness that is what i grasped from this poem by our magrishi again another uh, daily noble thought topic which is a powerful quote so far we said the knowledge is to be expanded and we have to utilize that uh, properly by moving towards the total consciousness right so in one of the message our guru is telling that the knowledge is the weapon 
only nature has a solution for all the problems so whenever there is a problem so the problem is created by the nature so the solution is also lying with nature itself so clear consciousness keeping the mind clear can only win each and every problem everyone has this consciousness let's evoke this consciousness use this as a weapon to eradicate all worries thereby attain peace and happiness in life so when trying to achieve the objective of our life we should progress by utilizing the consciousness which is knowledge in our today's context for our discussion so by utilizing that as a weapon we can move through and achieve the objective of our life okay before uh, concluding the discussion today so we have seen that what human society or what other philosophers have told about knowledge so far and we have seen some of the concepts which are given by the religions for the human being and then we started what our maharishi's explanation is touching on our theme knowledge and when we talk about the practices how the meditation is supporting to achieve that knowledge progress of knowledge to achieve up to the fullest state and then we talked about the expansion of our mind why it is important and then we saw that knowledge has to be used as a weapon to eradicate all our miseries or problems in our life so that by having higher level of knowledge we will be able to solve all the problems so now another uh, informative quote a lamp can only light another lamp when it continues to burn in its own flame so when we talk about uh, the vedatriam concepts we all learned and we have reached to a state of utilizing it in our effect Uh, day to day life to some extent at the same time we have to spread the vedatriam principles to others also for doing that our flame has to be effective when we are trying to light another lamp right so this is the quote given by ravindranath tagore so uh, i i believe uh, on this basis or on this concept keeping in mind only our magrishi has designed the logo of our organization also our practice the world community service center is having a practice which is called termed as sky yoga simplified kundalini yoga the logo itself is having a lamp which is being continuously maintained that hand which is going there is maintaining the flame in a proper manner so this is the basic uh, responsibility uh, to be in our uh, every one of our mind strongly to maintain that so that we will be able to spread the light of vedatriyam to the entire humanity as maharishi has dreamt okay so with this uh, i like to conclude so by having the understanding through this discussion at least to some level on the theme knowledge and we all have to make ourselves as a temple for the consciousness to live within ourselves yeah that is why maharishi used to say that the temple of consciousness is built that can be achieved by every human being by making themselves as a temple for consciousness to consciousness to live within them so definitely all our practices will help us i strongly believe that that all practices which help us to reach to this state so i strongly wish all of you to reach that stage through today's discussion to some extent thank you thanks for uh, joining and reading out uh, the quote in several languages which adds more and more uh, involvement in this discussion thanks to all the volunteering uh, members thank you be blessed by the divine